Hi everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today we're going to look at a, a number of different things. Starting off with this 1943 017 that I've got clamped up here and uh, got some damage to the uh, upper bout on the corner here. And uh, let's take these clamps off and see what we got. And uh, hopefully this is all um, nice and solid and uh, lined up properly. But uh, the corner was smashed here and um, a well-meaning person uh, kind of soaked the area with some glue. It kind of looked like hide glue. Wasn't exactly sure, but it definitely um, softened up with warm water. So that's what I did was pretty much soak the area with warm water repeatedly to pry all the parts apart, all the different pieces apart, and then uh, carefully fit them back together. Had to trim a few little extra pieces. A lot of times what happens is the, the fractured parts will kind of splinter off and move in odd ways so that it doesn't fit back together. But I think we got it back together pretty nicely there with a few pieces. There's obviously a few more pieces still to fit in, but this surface right here is lined up well, nice and flat. There was also this seam had opened up all the way to this top crack, so I glued that up and just glued this whole corner together. There is a brace called the transverse brace right here that was off the top right there. I also glued that up at the same time, all with hot hide glue. We'll do a little cleanup of the excess hot hide glue with some, just a, a damp paper towel should. Oops, there we go. The hide glue will soften nicely with just a little bit of moisture, especially when it's fairly fresh after just having glued this up yesterday. Unclamped it today here. All right. Next, we're going to have to try and fit in these few little shards here and see where they go, if I can get them in here, and I should be able to. Let's try this piece first and just see, because it should fit into this cavity right here, which is it's not fitting in yet. So I'm going to have to do some trimming there to fit that in. And let me see here. This piece also has some finish on the outside. That's going to have to go in here. Yeah, that's the main one that's going to fit in there and cover that hole. There's a little shard sticking out there. Just that's part of what we're going to be going for next is to fit that in that hole. That's sort of the outside of that cavity. And this is the interior. Actually, no, that, no, I get it now. This piece goes in on, in top here, so that, that's going to have to fit in that corner there, and I'm going to have to do what I can to trim that in. Ah, this, this is a real key piece because it's got that finish in there. You can see that fit right there. It's going to cover up that hole. But I'm going to have to uh, trim and work all these things to fit those. It's really three different pieces that are going to cover up these three different holes. That project is just beginning and ongoing. The next thing we have to look at is a project that's actually finished. 1937 D18. Um, which was paired with a additional 1937 triple O 18. Um, the triple O is done and out of here already. The, uh, the D 18 is done and waiting to be picked up, but, uh, 
The main things that I did was change out the bridge and refret the guitar. Um, the, uh, the neck had a uh, upward bow in it from string tension over the years, so what I did was to put in a new fresh set of frets, but um, a compression refret which, in which the part of the T fret, the tang that goes in the slot, is slightly larger than the fret that is coming out, and it takes that slot and expands it this way, which um, makes the neck bow in the opposite way. And uh, once you put string tension on, the idea is that it pulls up nice and straight with just a minimal amount of relief. And that brings the action down and the playability in the middle of the neck nice. But the other thing we did was replace the uh, bridge that was on there, which was not an original bridge. Um, actually, this one may have been an original bridge that was modified. I believe that's what it was. At one point, it was screwed on in three different places. That was repaired, those screws removed and the holes patched, but then it got um, sanded and reshaped before it was glued down. So it, again, it wasn't a, an original looking bridge. Um, you can detect a little bit of an area around the bridge where you can see that the other bridge that was on here that was either moved slightly or was actually it was not oversized it was just moved around slightly so the footprint of this new tj thompson 1930s uh, bridge is slightly smaller but i was able to seal off that raw wood with the hide glue that was used to glue the bridge down the main feature of the of the of the thompson 30 style bridges and any um uh, real martin 30s bridge is the way this back contour is um, shaped. All the bridges, this is called a belly bridge, and this is the belly back here, this extended part, um, which basically just, um, it was developed after the just straight rectangular bridges and the pyramid bridges that Martin made for different models, um, which were, the footprint was this, was this rectangle. And what it did after the development of uh, steel strings, which put more tension on the top, it just gave more gluing surface to the bridge itself so that it could stay on there longer and more steady in this extended part back here. The 30s bridge has a pretty uh, severe drop off from the pins down to the edge here. Um, instead of a nice rounded curve like you see on the 40s and later, it's a very steep or flat contour. And the other thing is that the corners right here, this line right here and the shape and look of it is important to that 30 style look. If you took this contour and extended it out to these corners here, it would make this, it would extend that and make it look weird, not right. So in addition to this contour right here, it has a bit of this thing here where there is a scoop as it comes out to these points here where this uh, the back of that bridge kind of goes like this. If you maneuver it in the white light you can see that scooped area like this pretty good and I hope uh, everyone at home can see that. But anyhow um, all that being done, it, you know, this guitar, it's, it straightened the neck, stiffened the neck while still leaving it nice and light, um, and the guitar has just come alive. <laughs>
1937 D Martin D18. There's that one all finished up. And of course, we're always busy here in the shop at Elderly Instruments, so I get this project started. That one completed. And two more guitars already started, too. This is a, uh, a D45, a late model D45, but it, it is... Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the date. I'll have to check that. Wait a minute. You can always check the date by looking at the serial number. And uh, this is a 1999 D45. So even though it is a very late model, it's still 20 some years old. And that uh, string tension on it for that 20 years is enough to affect the neck angle adversely so this thing needs a uh, neck reset. I've already started on it by removing the 15th fret and actually I have loosened the fingerboard extension. I also happen to loosen this little piece of binding unfortunately which happens a lot on the 45 style instruments because you have to put a spatula right underneath there after heating it up. And although I protected the binding itself from that heating, it did loosen that glue at the end, but it'll be pretty easy to re-glue. Then I pull the 15th fret and drill two holes down into that fret slot, which also penetrate the end of the dovetail cavity. That's going to allow me to inject steam in there, and that will loosen the whole glue joint and have that come apart. Similar job on this uh, 70s D28 which has definitely seen a lot of playing time. Sound hole is, uh, is less than perfect, but uh, at the request of the owner, we're just going to let that uh, be a testament to the, uh, uh, the time this is, guitar has spent in, uh, in performance. So, but same sort of thing. String tension over time has pulled that baby up, so the neck needs to be reset. And I've done the same thing in prep to take the neck off as this guitar, which is to loosen the fingerboard extension with heat, spatula that off, pull the 15th fret, drill those two holes for the steam. Um, interesting thing on this guitar, this guitar was purchased here uh, back in the day, and it has a problem that is fairly common for early 70s Martins that was corrected before we sold it. Um, the bridge was glued on too close to the fingerboard. I'm not exactly sure how that happened in Martin, a lot of speculation, but for a fact a lot of them have this problem. So what we did was to remove the bridge, plug the pinholes. Actually most of the time back in the day, we, uh, a lot of times we would replace the bridge plate inside there. Then we got to various ways to plug those holes and re-drill them that little bit back. And then uh, fit the bridge down to that new area. But of course, this area right in front of the bridge, because we're moving the bridge in this direction, and there would be bare wood there from where the bridge used to sit. Now we moved it back. We would uh, refinish that area and touch it up. Uh, a challenging thing to do at the, at the time and to really make it look right is actually pretty impossible to make it make it disappear and make it look pretty good. But um, one of the reasons I bring it up is that over time is that new finish cures and uh, gets closer in age in one manner of speaking to the rest of the guitar and the guitar continues to take that wear and tear. That touch up looks better and better over time. And uh, I was really happy to see it and to see how nice that touch-up turned out over the years. And uh, we have some different methods for curing this problem now. You can put on what's called a saddle back bridge where both the pinholes and the saddle slot are further away from that front edge. Usually that saddle back bridge is oversized. So you can get the saddle slot exactly where you need it and cover up this area with that larger bridge. A lot of times what we do is fit that bridge right to the same footprint by moving it back but then trimming off the back edge. You can make a, a new bridge to accommodate that. You can take a bridge blank that has no pinholes and no slot, 
cut in it and do that same thing. But that's how we started off doing that is to uh, refinish that area. But there you go. Two more projects going. And uh, that's what I have for you in the shop today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Got any questions, send them our way. And we'll see you soon back in the shop. Mm -hmm.